just look at your alert. Hey everyone, I uh, wanted to hop on here. It's Saturday and I uh, just got off of work, worked for several hours today. So I wanted to hop on here and do another Amish Q&A. And this time, uh, say hello to uh, Elmer Miller. Uh, I'm going to have him on to do an Amish Q&A today. And uh, I'm going to try to watch the comments on his phone and see how this goes. But uh, Elmer, you... Uh, you grew up in uh, Kenton, Ohio, Amish, the same community as I did, but you uh, are a little bit younger, well, quite a bit younger, but I left uh, 23 years ago, and he is 21 now, right? Yes, I am. And so growing up in the Kenton community uh, with the rules and everything, what, what would you say maybe motivated you more than anything to uh, get out of the Amish? Um, for me, I moved to Michigan with my family when I was 12 years old. And for me, that mo what motivated me to go leave the Amish was I, growing up, I would always look at the other communities and I'm like, why can't I do this and stuff like that. And then there's a lot of like, I would say two sides. Basically, there you'd have the people that would say they'd be good and the other ones would, you know, they'd be better. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of, you know, and, and I did not like that at all um, just because I don't like being pointed at and stuff all the time, so... So yeah, I I did not like the rules and stuff like that. So that's what motivated me. So would you say uh, would you say there was any? Can you come over just a little bit more? That way you're in the in the media over here, just a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. Would you say there was like any like bullying going on and uh, where they would make fun? I know a lot of people. I I, I was messaging the other day with somebody. It's what what reminds me is a lot of people don't understand that there is actually bullying going on. I know I got bullied because mm -hmm. of how our dad was. Right. So uh, let's talk about that for a second. Did you have, did uh, you notice that at all? Yes. For me, um, I didn't really notice it when I lived in Kenton. Um, but when we moved to Michigan, when I was 12 years old, um, just because we dressed different um, and we still had our Kenton, Ohio, Amish clothes and up there they dressed way different. And just because of that, we got made fun, uh, you know, by a lot of people. And it just, like, it hurts. Like, and so, yeah, I got bullied quite a bit. But Mainly I, I, could, I could stand up for myself, so. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, different style of clothes, so it looked a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your, your cuffs when you guys moved? Did you guys have any different measurements? On, I know Kenton, growing up when I was still at home, it had to be an inch and a half on a cuff on your on your shirt. Yep. Um, for me up there, it could be, I think two and a half inches. So when we first moved, you know, it was only an inch and a half, you know, and that was like, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm different than the other people. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it was just, you know, the dress wise was just a lot different. Like down here, they dress, um, how would I say they dress a little, uh, sloppier basically like up there. They have like, they're cleaned up more, their clothes fit yeah. more perfectly and stuff like that. Yeah. Now I got some uh, questions I had written down from people that's messaged me. Uh, we talked about this when it was really cold. Uh, I guess Kenton, our community where we grew up at, went kind of viral even on the news channels out of Columbus, Ohio, where they would show uh, some some skiing going on and some putting up of ice. Um, now, do you remember and doing any any of that stuff, uh, Elmer? Uh, putting up ice growing up in the Kenton uh, community. I did not do too much in Kenton, but when we moved to Michigan, we did quite a bit of um, ice um, and stuff like that. And up there, I mean, if you didn't get up ice, get the ice up till like uh, around December, you 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 didn't want to put it up because it was like sixteen to twenty four inches thick, and you didn't want to want to want those. And um, for the winter up there, I mean, we went skiing behind the buggies all the time and stuff like that. And you know, it was it was a good time. I don't miss growing up Amish at all. You got to have some fun when it's usually work, 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 and you don't have hardly time to play. So sometimes it is fun to get maybe, I know we didn't have skis, but sometimes we would put the figure skates on our feet and we would grab a hold of the back of the buggy and just go down the road because it was all <laughs> packed down so it got slick. So you could actually put ice right, skates on. So. Right. Got to have fun every once in a while too. You know? That's right. That's right, and and on the way to work, you know, if you went to work with the buggy, I mean, you could just strap the skis on and put the rope on and and, and have fun while you're going to work. On the uh, barefooted thing, I had I had talked about that in one of my videos a while back. Uh, is that something, uh, Elmer, that you would say you guys also did maybe in school? 
uh, that kind of competition with your buddies in school. Hey, I can go barefoot a little <laughs> longer. I'm tough. <laughs> um, for me, the worst one I ever had was uh, my family was, I don't know, we were Millers, so we always said the Millers were tough. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, so the worst one we ever did was it was like mid-November, and we went to school that morning. It was like 30 degrees or something. And by mid-afternoon, it started snowing. It snowed like three inches that day, and we were barefooted all day. We're out wow. playing like baseball and stuff in the snow. And that was in, the worst one I ever had. So you're, you're playing ball in, with bare feet? Yes. Yeah, yeah I remember it, it was stinging like crazy, but, you know, you didn't have a choice. Well. Either do that or stay in the schoolhouse. <laughs> well, maybe the Millers are a little bit tougher than the Yados. <laughs> Uh, I just I noticed uh, Irvin Beachy, he'd be my first cousin. He says, don't feel bad, Elmer Miller. I got bullied, too. I just laughed at them. Well, I guess when you get bullied, uh, that's probably the best response. That's right. The bullies right. don't like that when you kind of laugh it off like it don't bother yeah. you. And for me, when I got bullied uh, and stuff like that, I would to me, I would tell myself, maybe I have something that they want and they would like to have. And like I always drove nice horses and stuff like that, and I was like, maybe they're jealous of me, and then that's why they, you know, they they bully me all the time. So I really didn't care, you know. Usually jealousy. Yeah. Uh, they want to be like you. Yep. yep. So therefore, they make fun of you. Right. Right. Um, now, with some of the rules, this is the first time I have you on here, and uh, I just kind of want to ask. I, I was kind of rebellious. I, I lots of times share in my videos some of the rules I broke. Um, you know, it wasn't really a law where you could get in trouble for it, but it's just the Amish rule that, that I would break. Uh, you know, I, I used to sneak a radio around. I used to uh, sneak back to the English neighbors and put English clothes on and sneak to different events and try to sneak out. Uh, so is, is there like anything that you remember that you might have done breaking the Amish rules? Uh, for me, I broke a lot of them, but I didn't. I got caught a couple times, but not too many. Uh, for me, like I would... I would use like n I wouldn't use any power tools during the week, uh, but on Saturdays, me and my brother we would do stuff on the side, and we would we would go out and we would use her buddy's power tools and stuff like saws and drills and everything, and and then in in and at noon we would go in and uh, you know watch a movie together, and if we would have got caught, we would have been shunt you know for I think it's like six weeks or something. And, you know, we would have had to get in front of the church and confess and everything. And so we just kind of kept it every, everything under, undercover and just kind of did, you know, did what we did. Would you also say that sometimes the ones you thought you could trust that were also breaking rules with you would sometimes, uh, I remember this personally, where they would turn their back on them. Mm -hmm. Maybe to make themselves look better, they would snitch on you mm -hmm. and tell on you. So you have experience with that? Oh, yeah, that would, that would happen quite a bit. Um, like, I would be doing the same thing as they would be doing, and I would get in trouble, and they wouldn't. So that's another thing that motivated me to leave was um, just because of that, just because, you know, it was double-crossing. Yeah. Now, Elmer, was you baptized before you left? I was, yes. I was baptized. Yep. So you actually had to uh, go make it right with the church. Yep, that's right. I, I had to do that once, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that again, so I left. And the, and the reason I had to do it was because um, it was like 90 degrees out, on a Sunday, and you're not supposed to roll your, with your church clothes on, you're not supposed to roll your sleeves up, and so we were out playing, and you know, baseball or whatever it was, and we, a bunch of us boys roll our sleeves up, and one of the bishop's sons snitched on us, and we had to, we had, like, they wouldn't let us be part of communion services just because of that if we didn't oh. make it right with the church all because of that yeah yeah just because we rolled up our sleeves and we were like you know why do we have to do this and the next sunday we would go out and do the same thing <laughs> <laughs> i kind of like uh hearing stories like that because i actually i i left i was main okay i was joining church at the time and i ended up uh dropping out before mm -hmm. i got baptized and so i never Kind of my mom and dad always you know, got yelled at for mm -hmm. what I did wrong, breaking the rules. Uh, like when I was joining church, I, I rode a bicycle and they found out about it. So <laughs> they were going to hold the whole group back and not baptize them all because of what I did. And I didn't think that was fair. So I said, well, I, I don't want to hold the rest of them up. So I'm just going right. to go ahead and I'm just going to not, not put my mm -hmm. suit on, Mutza, mm -hmm. uh, on that next Sunday. And I backed out. That way they can continue with it. And, and then that's right after that is when I decided right. I'm going to leave. So, but, so you actually had to go before the elders yep. 
Like, now, you would say you feared them more, right? I, I felt I felt like an idiot, basically. To I, I had to go out, and so they voted. We, had, we all, this is like five of us boys, all the same age, basically. And we had to go on the outside, and the church voted to see if they want to forgive us just because we did that small little thing. And you don't see what they all did, you know. They did a lot worse stuff than that. Um, so they, you know, they voted on us to see if they want to forgive us so we can be part of communion services and stuff like that. And and, it, and afterwards, we went out and we laughed about it. But, you know, it just it, wow. it just kind of tickled us, you know, the, why, the reason we couldn't be part of communion just because of that. But it didn't matter if Jesus forgave you. Uh, right. If you confess to the Lord, hey, I'm sorry what I've mm-hmm. done, uh, I, I messed up. You still have to wait until the church deemed you forgiven so many Sundays later before you, the church takes you back in, right? Right, correct. Yep. And it's just it's just so funny how it all works. Um and for about being baptized and stuff, I did I really didn't know because I had left when I was sixteen years old for about a month and they come come and got me again. And so they pushed me to um join the church. And I really didn't want to just because I didn't know what they were wanting me, wanting from me. And so I joined them or I, you know, we, you, you go so many months and then the last Sunday before you, or the Saturday, you go to the bishop's house and they, you know, they have a whole line of stuff that they want to tell you. And then the last thing they ask you is if you would be willing, you know, if you would get married, you would you be willing to. If you would be nominated as a preacher, would be you be willing to preach? And when they asked me that question, I almost said no. And if I would have said no, I wouldn't have got baptized. I didn't even know they asked yeah. you that. See, I didn't yeah. get baptized. Yeah. So they actually asked you if you were ever mm-hmm. selected, would you be willing to preach? Right. So yeah. you, so once again, you're forced to say no, or you're forced <laughs> to say yes, because if you say no, they won't yeah. baptize you. So, I mean, for me, I mean, I wasn't, me and my brother had the same situation. Me and my brother Paul, we had the same situation. We don't like talking in front of a lot of people. Um, so I really wanted to say no, but I had to say yes. Be the first one to say no. (laughs) Like me, when I backed out of getting baptized and I stood up to the Amish church, Mm -hmm. nobody had done anything like that. So you could, you know, I felt so weird and I didn't want to make my mom and dad feel, you know, look bad or whatever. I knew it would make them look bad, Mm -hmm. but I just did it anyway. I'm like, you know, I've got my mind made up. I'm just going to not wear my uh, suit for baptizing or whatever. So I just did it anyway. Right. So it, sometimes it takes the first one to do it. Yeah. And by the way, when I left, uh, nobody had left in 20 years. Then after I left the Amish, I mean, it was like domino effect. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole yeah. bunch of them that left now. Yeah, it was a it was a slap in the face pretty much, huh? Yeah. yeah. Now you got, uh, how many brothers you got out of the Amish? I have uh, one brother out of the one Amish. Brother. Yep. And he helped me out hugely. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if he wouldn't have helped me out like he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're brothers, and we try and help each other out and stuff like that. But I, I had uh, about how many siblings I got. I have there's fifteen of us. I got eight brothers 15. and six, eight brothers and six sisters. Yeah. Wow, yep. you got eight brothers and six sisters. Yeah, that's, now, right. that's a big Amish family. Yeah, yeah I was. They were busy. Now yeah. you're. Uh, did you was Ezra Ezra Bonder would have been what your grandpa? Yes. Now, yeah. your grandma just passed away recently. Was, did you go to the funeral in Amish clothes, or did you even go to the funeral? Um, we did not go to the funeral. Um, so our Uncle Levi, which it would be my grandma and grandpa's youngest son, he he's out of the Amish too. So he was there the three days before the funeral and stuff, and he didn't like we didn't dress in Amish clothes but just because we don't fit in them anymore. And, we, I mean, we obviously grew yeah. Um, stuff like that. So we went out and we got like suits and stuff like that. But we went out the day before for the showing and then and we were there for two hours and then they were like, well, it was, we, we showed up about 10 o'clock and we had to leave by 10 or 11 30. And like they said, well, you've been here two hours and we, we kind of want the rest of the afternoon by ourselves. And you know, that, that hurt just as much as seeing grandma, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, laying in there. And it, like it, like they told us to leave. You know our grandma's showing, and so that's usually what hurts more is is the rejection of the community, and the elders of mm-hmm. their traditional ways is rejecting you instead of yep. the actual heartache you're going through from learning losing a loved one. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and and the it was easier just because there was like twelve of us, cousins and and then my uncle. Um, so it made it easier just because there was a group of us, and so we kind of stood, you know, stuck yeah. together and stuff like that. So, so. you were not alone, to right? Sit there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Molly Gallo, uh, she says, I used to have Amish guys come in and use the computers at the library to connect, contact a girlfriend in Indiana and <laughs> borrow DVDs. I asked after the third or fourth time, I asked how they were able to watch the DVI or whatever that means there, TV. I can't get the other comment up on there. But yeah, I mean, we can see how, uh, some of them will ask you to do stuff like that. You know, I mean, we used to, I used to ask English friends all the time to, uh, you know, basically break the rules. But now taking advantage of somebody, if you're using their, their phone or electricity and you're, I would, I would, I was always nice to try to offer money, mm -hmm. uh, even for, for a ride, you know, gas ain't cheap. I always tried to be polite. Now I've also had people ask me, Hey, why are the Amish so rude? I know there's a few probably here and there that just, they mm -hmm. don't offer no money. They're right. just rude. They're like, they're like, hey, you know, they walk up to this person. They're like, hey, can I use your phone? Just in kind of a, basically, you, the English people, they were like, you know, you know this guy is you know, a rough dude. And like, and then they would say, well, thank you. And they never offer, offer to pay him anything. Um, and like my dad, you know, I think the one time they went to Mexico uh, and stuff. And on the way out, he needed to call home about something and he walked up to this colored guy and, and he he's like hey you know can i use your phone he's like yeah you, you can and he offered to give him like five bucks and he's like don't worry about it he said just tell me a little bit about your life and and that's all he that's oh, all that's he needed cool. yeah so <laughs> well i know about the amish i'll let you use the phone if you tell me why are you dressed like that <laughs> right right um tammy rhodes niggles she says we go to the rodeo in Salina, Ohio, and we see Amish there drinking beer. Is that allowed? <laughs> um, I go to Hat Creek Arena in Van Wert a lot every Saturday night, pretty much if I get time. Um, and there's uh, there's always Amish people there, and they get drunk, like drunk, drunk. And, and that's wrong. And and it's like they're not supposed to, right. but the whole community does it so they don't get in trouble they're away from the community and they're right. like oh well the bishop ain't around let's just go have a good time <laughs> we'll see the bishop in the morning <laughs> <laughs> he'll forgive us on sunday <laughs> right daniel s bond trigger he says well to tell you guys the truth i don't know how many times that i want to tell them that i don't agree with the ortnum well i think most of yep. us that were baptized especially uh, wanted to tell him that you don't uh, agree with the Ortnum, the Atnum. Yep. If you didn't follow the Ortnum, you were you were the rebel in the church, and and I was put I was across I was pushing the fence all the time. Like I would cross that fence a lot, and thank God I didn't get in uh, as much trouble as I did. Now, yeah. growing up in Kenton, I at my time growing up until I left, I didn't really uh, see. A whole lot of abuse among the community. We had a father that was obviously abusive mentally and physically. But mm -hmm. um, as far as your experience growing up in the Amish, uh, Elmer, did you have any kind of uh, abuse or anything you witnessed in your own family and then also others that you were around, your friends? Um, I would, yes. We had one family out there in Michigan. Um, and there I pitied the kids because he would beat the kids in front of the whole church. Basically, not the whole church, but if we, you know, if you would have a lot of people get together and stuff, and he would, like, if his kids were, you know, being bad, instead of taking them out behind the barn or, you know, out behind the house or something, he would do it right, right in front of everybody. You know, like, hey, listen here now, you know. And my dad was a rough dude as well, but I don't regret it anymore. You know, I, I used to, you know, growing up, it, like, it hurt. Sometimes but, we kind of needed it too. Right? Yeah, that's right. And I needed it a lot. <laughs> I think it's always more uh, better off if they do go somewhere else away from public. Because mm -hmm. I was always embarrassed when my dad would try to spank me or grab my ear and twist it half off in front of other people. <laughs> yeah, and and that was that hurt more than the actual thing that you know that, that you know the actual spanking or something. You know, that was probably the <laughs> most the the better discipline out of the whole discipline mm -hmm. is not wanting others to see that dad did that in public. Mm -hmm. So. Since that was what really stuck, I made sure I behaved in public so he didn't humiliate me in yep, public. Yep, that's <laughs> right. Um, we are at the Macarena 
a lot also, same thing, Tammy says. So both arenas, yep, yep, you see the Amish showing up and they're getting drunk. <laughs> yeah, it's like in a half an hour from the, uh, it's a pretty big community in Indiana and they come down there a lot and like some oh, of the okay. guys, some of the Amish guys come down to ride as well, so. Okay. It's, I've never been over there. I've never yeah, been to those yeah. arenas. Well, I might have to take you one time. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to check it out. But I know I, I really enjoyed that kind of stuff, though, when, when growing up in the Amish, to be able to go to an event, something like that, where, uh, which, to be honest with you, I, from what I remember, we wasn't allowed to really go to any place right. where there's a lot of English gatherings or mm-hmm. it was just forbidden. So if you wanted to go to something like that, like the Coon Chase was very popular when I was a little kid. So the Coon Chase in Kenton was a lot of, you know, obviously drunk people too, but I had to sneak out in the middle of the night crawl down the roof, go put English clothes on. Well, I didn't have to, but I did because I wanted to blend in. So I went put English clothes on and go to the coon chase. Uh, so now, did you ever did you ever sneak down a, a window or a roof to try to escape in the middle of the night to do anything, Elmer? I did not just because my parents, they because I had left back when I was 16, and they kept, me, they kept a really a tight grip on me just because they were scared I'm going to leave. And that's kind of another thing that kind of pushed me to leave just because they kept such a tight grip on me. And, you know, and so I was like, you know, I'm not allowed to do it. So I did not do a lot of that, um, but I would do it during the day or, you know, before dinner or something. Yeah. So sometimes the only way to get by with something was to do it at night when it was dark. <laughs> yep. And then, and then growing up and talking about writing uh, our rodeo. And so growing up my whole life, I was like, you know, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna ride ride a couple bulls, you know, when I grow up. And my brothers and my friends, they would say, "Oh, you're never riding." Um, and then I left uh, a little over a year ago now. And last whole summer, I rode. And you know, and the, and the only reason I did it was just because. So, like, my friends found out from back home that are still Amish, and everything. Like, I went to a couple sales up there. They'd come in and they'd, they'd be like, you know, hey, how's bull riding going? And there we go. They were like. You know, that's that's kind of cool that you write and stuff like that. So, you know, I I basically did it to show them like, yeah, I, I, that I you did can it. Do yeah. it. So you've yeah. actually wrote a bull. Yep, I I wrote the whole last summer. Yeah, uh, you're more hillbilly <laughs> than I am. <laughs> it would it would hurt, but that's about it. I, I've never been brave enough to make it that way. I've never been brave enough to go hop on a bull or even a wild. Well, we did on a wild horse growing up in the Amish. Mm-hmm. I, I love getting on there. Because mm-hmm. obviously we we've snuck to the English neighbors and watched westerns, so I yep. was inspired by that. So I'm like, well, guess what? I'm gonna get on that horse and I'm gonna <laughs> ride it too. And I went whoop through the air. <laughs> and 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 I and I had pretty good riding experience. I I used to train horses before I left. Um, I had a couple friends that would bring their horses that they would bring get horses in to train. And then I had trained a couple mustangs that they pulled right out of wild and stuff like that. Um, so it was it was a good good experience. Um, but I, I think I'm done writing just because it, it gets in the way of life, basically. Um, like it's not going to make you successful un- unless you're good at it. And I'm, I was, I was, I was decent, but not, not perfect. Um, Jennifer Stover commented and said, do you remember my grandpa, Don Elmer? Don grandpa. Stover. I, not on the top of my head, I don't. Leanne. Kilmore says, you two look like brothers. Well, we're not brothers. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a Miller and I'm a Yoder. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even think we're related, are we? You know. Uh, I think we're like third cousins. I think it was like, like third cousins. Yeah. I talked to Le- your brother Lester about that one time. I think it was like third cousin mm-hmm. or something like that. Yep. I got like 300 and some first cousins, so I mean, who, who knows? Right. Um, Tammy Rhodes Nichols, do you have somewhere to go? When you decide to leave the Amish, or do you just walk away? Well, you you kind of got to plan something. I had a guy waiting on me. It was pre-planned. I kept it secret from my family, but I had to sneak out. Uh, Sunday morning when they went to church, I stayed behind and had him pick me up. So I, I needed help. If I didn't have somebody to help me, I, I'm not so sure I'd have been ever able to leave. Right. Um, for me, I I called one of my friends about two weeks before, and I was like, hey, or I called my brother, and I'm like, hey, I don't know how long I can do it. He's like, well, you know, just stick it out as long as you can and then just leave. And so I called my friend. I never told my brother I'm going to leave, the one that is out in the, out here. And I called one of my friends and I said, hey, can you meet me at 11 o'clock, you know, half a mile down the road? And so I went out and my mom was sitting in the living room. She's like, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to the bathroom, to the outhouse. And I went out to the outhouse so I didn't lie. 
and then I ran down a half half mile on the road with my stuff, and they were calling my friends that they figured I would go to, and they were like, you know, is Elmer with you? Like it was at twelve o'clock at night, and oh, wow. yeah, and and they. And they actually, the next day, they actually filed a missing persons report. Are you serious? Yes, because they thought I was wow. a troubled kid, I guess. Um, and, and then they didn't know if I went out, you know, out back somewhere and, you know. Did something crazy. Yeah, yep, yeah. did something crazy, you know. Yeah, wow. So, so yeah, I, I was 20 years old and they filed a missing persons report. And that just kind of, it kind of hurt, you know, just because I'm like, hey, I'm an adult, you know. Yeah, you're over 18 now. That, you can do whatever right. you want, but. It, was it twenty one for you as well? Uh, in in the, growing up, your brothers and sisters when they turned twenty one, that's when you finally can have your own money, correct? Yes, yep. And that and that was always like I did construction full time, and I would hand over that check paycheck every weekend, and I would be seeing how much you know, just between five of us boys, how much we would be given to our dad all the time. I mean, we were living for free and stuff, but if we could have had. 50 bucks out of that paycheck that would have been yeah. you know a big something. thing to, yeah that would have been something and if i had if i had 20 dollars in my wallet i was like man i got i got money i can do something you know so, i remember being happy as all get out by finding a couple quarters beside the road on the way to school <laughs> <laughs> like we would collect pop cans and stuff on the way to school and take them to uh stuff like that you know get you know like two bucks or something but that's about it um jennifer stover said that don's last name was shoot S C H U. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he, Shoot. yeah. My dad took care of him, uh, his last couple of years. Like m- my brother Lester, the one that's out here, he basically babysat him, uh, quite a few times. And then he would steal his or go out after he down would be asleep. He would go out and and get the keys to his van and go pick <laughs> up his Amish buddies and <laughs> go to town and stuff like that. You know. So he actually took the van and yep. go out and pick up his Amish yep. buddies and haul yep. them around. Yep, that's right. Do you have a driver's license? He did not. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one they did was they they were going to I think they went to Walmart and stuff. And on the way out, they uh, they forgot to turn the headlights on, and there's a cop following them, and they oh. like they got out of town real quick. Didn't so, get pulled over? No, he did not. That'd have been kind of funny. Cop pulling over like, "Hey, uh, you got your driver's license? No, I'm Amish." <laughs> <laughs> no, like my dad he actually bought uh, Don's farm as well. So, oh, really? yep, and then he sold it to one of the Amish guys that lives there now. Uh, Tammy Nichols says, uh, do you miss the Amish community? Um, I do miss the Amish community the way they were close-knit. Like, they would help, help each other, you know, with barn racings, uh, getting ready for church, getting ready for weddings, fun- like funerals especially. Like, if somebody passed away, you could figure on that night or the next day, there was 50 guys there cleaning the barn, and cleaning the barns that you know that you they wanted to keep the funeral in and stuff like that and it's just everybody is willing to help and stuff take the day off and help yeah. um so i i miss do miss like i really miss my family um and then to, uh, a week ago my dad called me for the first time and you know it talking with him it re- really made me miss my family and stuff like that uh, and i went home to visit them one time as well so how long have you been out uh it's been about year, not quite year and a half yet. Oh wow! Yeah. You, you're just kind of fresh out of that. Yep, yeah, I'm. I'm still fresh. Kannst du dead Schweizer? Oh yeah, I can dead Schweizer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just enjoy interviewing you yeah. guys because I've been out 23 years this year, and some mm-hmm. of you just left. You know, your memory's still fresh. A mm-hmm. lot of the things that that the Amish do and their way of life and stuff and, like and, that. And talking with my dad on the phone, like he would speak German, and. I would I would have to sweat Dutch as well, you know, and it Dad was, on the phone with <laughs> yeah, him, right? Yeah, and and like, I would get so many English, and I felt weird because I would get so many English words mixed in. I'm like, I'm only out a year, but you know, if you don't, if you're not around it, you lo- basically lose it a little bit, right. you know. I remember visiting my mom, and I was speaking uh, Dutch, and then after like eight years, I'd say roughly eight years, I started to where I struggled with it, and she was very disappointed to the point where she had tears. That I could no longer, you know, speak yeah. it the way I yeah. used to. Yeah. And that really devastated her because as I visited with her, she wanted me to speak their language. And I was just getting too rusty. I can understand what she's saying better than I can actually speak it myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like for me, like I think it was when I was like 15, I believe, was the last time that my brother Lester come home to visit. And he got so many English words mixed into it. And I remember sitting there. I mean, I remember I was like. 
why can he speak Amish? Like, why, like, why would he lose it? You know, because he grew up like that, and you know, growing up like that. And now I know why. Like, you're not around it, yeah. and then you just don't you understand just it then. Yeah. But if yeah. you don't use it, you lose it. Mm-hmm. And there's an uh, Daniel Bontrager says Elmer Vibish do. That's in that's in good, maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, I see another comment there from Tammy. She says, "Would you? Would they accept you back?" Yes. So my dad tried my tried his best getting getting me back. He said, "You don't even have to live in the same community." He said, "You can move away," but I would still have to go back, break my pride, go in front of the church for. I think if you if you get shunned, I think if you leave, and if you do some stuff after you you go back. That you're not supposed to if they find out. I think you're like shunt for like two months or something like that. I wow. can't remember for sure. So you got to go in front of the church for two months, you know, every Sunday. and Get humiliated. Yeah, I mean, get humiliated and then, then finally they accept you back. But they would take you back. Yes, yep, they would. I know my mom said the same thing until she found out I had tattoos. And then she says, nope, yeah, you, you, you can't be accepted in this church. Wow. I'm like, oh. Well, I've been forgiven by the Lord, so it doesn't matter if you forgive me or not. So, got another comment on there I just saw pop up. Uh, Sadie Shuttler, she says, uh, I have to think when I'm trying to speak Dutch now, been out nine years. Yeah, that's quite a while. About eight years is when I started losing it. My mom still doesn't think forgetting how to speak Amish is a thing. Well, when you're in the Amish, you don't really, like you said a little bit ago, Mm -hmm. you don't think you can lose it, but Mm -hmm. you actually, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Yep. And and for me, like I would be around English people a lot. So when I was still Amish, I would get a lot of English words mixed into it, just because of that. Right. Um. So and I think that's what made me lose it a little faster. Daniel Weaver says I still speak it fluently after being gone twenty years. Wow. Well, Daniel, do you speak to Good somebody job. all the time daily? <laughs> you have a wife. You have a brother. You have yeah. family. Usually, when you speak yeah. to somebody, you keep mm-hmm. it fresh. Yeah. Andy Shetler, I've been gone for 30 years and can barely speak German. Wow. Yeah, there's another yeah. one. 30 years a long mm-hmm. time. Daniel Weaver, we had a preacher in our community that was in the military when he was young and he had tattoos. Wow. Wow. My community won't even, my community is so old order, they won't even allow tattoos. Wow. I asked my mom, I said, hey, uh, how, how do I get back in if I want it to come back, you know, with the tattoos? You just cover it up? Oh, no, no, you, you got to cut it off. What, chop my arm <laughs> off or what? But she said, yeah, it, it's it's just totally wrong. That the uh, the church would not accept me in there like that. And I'm like, well, I guess that's a no then. I'm never going back. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> I'm not and, planning on it anyway. And, and the amazing thing is, why is it it's such a small thing? Like, you, you basically you got forgiven, you know, by by the Lord, you know, and, but still, they won't accept you back. You know, I don't understand. You know, you know stuff like that. Oh, there was a. Uh, she even went on. My mother explained to me how somebody was branded one time a hot iron that they would use for cattle. The two brothers were being goofy, and one of them branded the other. But because there was an image on the skin, burned, you know, so it's a scar mm-hmm. that they were throwing a fit about that. So wow. the guy got so angry about the scar that he took a knife and literally cut and and around it removed his skin now he's got a bigger scar but it's not the scar that was there so okay wow so, it's still there's still a scar there though yeah you know? even even cutting out he was he was just that wow. fed up with the church uh saying something about that image that's printed on him mm-hmm. ezra yoder says hey elmer i enjoyed listening to it, it was interesting uh, that's my cousin from uh, missouri ezra yoder's yeah. your cousin yeah. he's he left uh he left li- about a month after i did oh okay about Four months later, he contacts me on a messenger, and he's like, "Hey, cousin." I'm like, "What? When did she leave?" And he's like, "About thirty days after you did." So, I'm seeing a lot of Amish names pop up on the comments right now. Samuel Bontrager, Daniel Weaver, Ezra Yoder. Uh, Daniel Weaver also. He always kept them covered, though. Makes Leans sense. Is, How many years have you been broken away, Eli? Well, for me, it's been twenty-three years this year. So he was. He left two years before I was born. Yeah, he wasn't even born yet when yeah. I jumped the fence. Yeah. When I noticed the the grass is a little bit greener on the other side, he wasn't even <laughs> born yet. <laughs> it took me 20 years to realize that. <laughs> now, I have a couple of questions I had written down from uh, people that would message me through the week. I kind of want to touch up on a few of these. Uh, the, the one was, why are all their barns red while the houses are always white? Now, that that's just... 
tradition, right, Elmer? Yes. Um, so that's basically... So it used to be to galvanize for, me, for the metal, like barns and houses. And then they switched to white on the barns, and they thought it was too fancy, and they switched to black on the houses. So, you know, black and white on the houses, red and white on the barns. Um, so, yeah, that's that's their, their rules. And now up for where I come from, we started putting black black roofs on our barns and some people they like from like the older people they kind of you know moan about it but you know it it it, 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 well, it used to be black but then they kind of went to white see it now you you say when you went to that community yeah so you can see how every community it depends mm -hmm. on the community it depends on yep. the okay when they start a new new community okay let, let's agree on let we can do this but we yep. can't do this yeah yeah, and then like I got cousins living in Wisconsin, and they can put whatever color roof they want on their barns and houses and stuff, which it do really doesn't matter what color house you live in, as long as you're right with the Lord. Harold Hockton says uh, you can have your tattoo removed. <clears throat> Check this out. I said to my mom, I said, uh, "Well, there's there's laser tattoo removal. It's very expensive. I looked into it." I said, I can go have that removed and spend all that money, but when I uh, checked up on it, it was it can draw the ink out. All that ink can be drawn out of your arm, and the imprint is still there, very lightly, but you can see it. And she says, nope, as long as there's an image there, it's still not, still wow. not okay. The so only, it can't have any image. <laughs> the, the only way you could have went back is to go out and get the saw and cut and, it off. <laughs> and, and that's why I said that. I know that sounds bizarre, wow. but I said, Mom, what you're basically telling me, there's no way for Eli Yoder to come back Amish unless I chop my arm off. Wow. Basically. Wow. Now, the other one here uh, I had written down, somebody asked me, where do they buy their clothes from? Well, I don't know about your mom, but my mom made everything homemade. All our clothes, yep. jackets, vests, shirts, everything was homemade. Yep. Um, she, like, they would buy the materials, uh, of course. But, yeah, everything, like, my sisters and my mom, that's what they did. Like, they would make clothes for us. And I was always a rough guy, and I... I have my clothes for a year, and Mom was like, "Why does that thing have a hole in there already?" <laughs> <laughs> Out there so, playing around, being rough, right? Yeah, that's right. So now I got on a nail. Now yep. you got to have a patch on. Yeah, yeah. Now you got. I used to uh, growing up as a kid. I would have so I would have patch up on patch on my pants because I was rough, and like I would just tear them in. And Mom was like, well, "You're not getting new new pants just yet." So she put another patch on. So sometimes you would have. Like, you know, like different colored uh, denims and stuff for pants. Um, so you sometimes you'd have four different colored patches on your pants. And so going to going to the public, you know, it was like, uh, it was really embarrassing. So it kind of. I uh, remember only we were very poor. So I we had I had two pairs of pants for a long time. And they were, they were patched up over and over and over. Wow. But now you, I also helped mom on a sewing machine with a little pedal on the bottom and all that. Cause wow. We were, there was five of us boys before a sister. Now, did you ever, ever have to experience on helping mom out in the, the womanly duties in the house because you had maybe younger sisters, or did you have older sisters? I, I had older sisters, yes. Okay. Um, so I didn't have to do too much. Um, I would help help with the dishes a lot, um, but that was about the only thing. You know, like If I would have you know, a tear in my shirt or something and mom didn't have time, I would go on the sewing machine and try to sew it myself. But she would, of course, you know, have to redo it, but... But that was about the only thing I really did. I was more of an outdoors kind of guy, and but I did only basically the only thing I did was dishes. So, I like this question uh, that was just asked of Brenda. Brenda says, "Why is it okay to use the neighbor's <laughs> phone but not have their own?" Yeah. You know, that's probably yeah. the most questions I get. Yeah, cars, phones. Why can the Amish use mine? Yeah, but they can't have their own. Yeah. Well, um. I know why she's asking that. I know her personally. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, so I know the story behind that one. Um, but they basically say that the phone. I read books on them. They, the Amish say that phones are basically the devil. And they say, and this, I one of my uncles gave me a book one time after I left the first time, and in there they had a, an Amish guy wrote a story in there, and he said that he dreamed of you know, when end of the world or whatever it was, that the people that are in hell, all these phones are going to be over in a corner with, you know, vile language pouring out and stuff like that. So 
I, I, I don't understand that either. They really soaked on that then yep. because a guy had a dream, supposedly, and he yep. could have made that up. Yeah, um, but that was just one of the things. But they basically, they, they try and stay away from technology right. and everything. Um, but you see all these Amish kids walking around with a smartphone in their hands, so, but they're still Amish. Um, like my cousin lives over in Middlefield over there. It's, they're, they're still Amish, but they drive cars. They, yeah. they, they party Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and sometimes Sunday night, but they're still Amish. They're still and, Amish yep. doing it. Yeah. Yep. The biggest, the biggest shocker I think is up in doing this is the, the messages from people of different communities and, Hey, well, we did this, we do that. And, uh, now, Elmer, we, we come from an old order community, and it's mm-hmm. very old order. Yep. And I'm realizing how old order when I have actual Amish message me all the time, and they'll say, well, we're old order, but we have phone, we have Facebook. <laughs> See, yep. that sounds bizarre yep. to me and you because mm-hmm. we were so forbidden to mm-hmm. have these things. So I can't hardly wrap my brain around mm-hmm. somebody saying, hey, I'm old order Amish, but yet my community is allowed to have a phone. Um, I asked my dad that question. That's funny because I asked my dad that question when I when I spoke with him, and he told me. He, I asked him. I said, "So why is it okay that they're breaking the rules and stuff, and they're doing it behind the scenes, and they got phones and stuff like that?" I said, "Why are they not? Why are they okay, and, and we leave the Amish, and we're not okay?" He said, "Well, he said that's what you call the hypocrite Amish. The hypocrite that, Amish. Yeah, that's that's what my yeah. dad says. He said they're, they're some hypocrites." There's a lot of them that'll say, hey, we're Amish, we're old order. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I understand maybe they're just a little bit more strict in some other mm-hmm. Amish, yep. more modern community, more liberal communities. Mm-hmm. But it's just so bizarre to me when, because we were so old order. We're mm-hmm. very not very far off from like Schwartz and Truber Amish yep. kind of old order. And then so when somebody says, hey, well, we're old order and we have this and this and this that our community wasn't allowed to have. That's just, that blows my mind. Yeah, it's, it, it just... You know, but if they do what the community, what their ordnung is, and they don't break those rules, I believe those are those are good people. Um, but if they start go out and start breaking all these rules and stuff, that's when I think they they like my dad said. That's yeah. when they turn into hypocrites, basically. Yeah. Uh, Leanne asked this. She says, uh, "How does marriage work? Do you pick your own wife in the Amish communities?" Um, there, there, there's rules, guidelines, but you can pick your own in the community if it's not your first cousin. And uh, well, it, it can be second cousin, but um, you, you can pick in your community uh, if you're not too closely related. And also, uh, going to another community was okay as long as you didn't date a girl from a more liberal community that had a lot of modern, more rules that they, the, where they didn't uh, communicate with each other as far as going to each other's church. So, like, Bell Center was always the one I yep. referred to. Yep. We couldn't go date a girl out of Bell Center because they were just too modern. Mm-hmm. And I and those were always the girls that I would be interested in because they would <laughs> <laughs> they would dress nicer. And, and I always thought they looked cuter and stuff like that. But Fancy. Yeah, they were more fancy. And that, stuff. That, that cap on the head is just nice and fancy. <laughs> <laughs> now, to me, it's just, if you got a cap on your head, I just think it's dumb. So, yeah, Leanne, we, we can pick our own uh, own women out of the community just – just got to be a big enough community where, uh, you know, you're not related to all of them. Because if you're if you're related to all of them, <laughs> you might only have two or three. But right. you know, if they're all ugly, what are you gonna do? You know? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> pick the ugly one. Um, and then, and, and like I, I tried, I tried getting a girlfriend when I was Salamish, but I, it just didn't work out for me. Oh, that was yeah. one of them. I was wanting to yeah. ask you in the beginning of this yeah. video. So you didn't date no Amish girl? Um, I I dated one for a couple couple weeks, but it didn't go very far just okay. because. I she, she was she was she was cute and everything, but yeah. and then she ended up with my uh, one of my cousins from Missouri, and Uh-oh. so <laughs> so yeah, I guess they're married now. So hey, what? but I I asked I asked a bunch of them out just because my friends would be like, hey, you know, I bet you won't ask this girl. Out. I'm like, yeah, I will, because <laughs> I don't I don't take I don't turn bets down. Like the one time they they had, I knew this girl would not accept it and stuff. So I asked her out. I was gonna ask her out, and then they were like. And they put a hundred and fifty dollars on the table, <laughs> and they said, "Here's your bet if you you know if you do it." But they said you can't just ask her out if she says no, you ain't gonna get the money. And so I didn't even ask her out just because. So Elmer, you're asking girls out to prove to your buddies, well, 
you said I'm not going to do it. Yep. Now I'm yep. going to do it. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of the, the what you would, what what would you call it? I was kind of the man. The daredevil. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm going to prove to you I, I'm going to do yep. it, even if you think I can't. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yep. I see what you mean. Yeah. So I, I would do that a lot. Uh, Paula Shake Jones says, "Hey, I've spent Thanksgiving and Christmas with that guy." Talking about you. Oh yeah. Hey Paula. I haven't seen her in a while. Heather's relation. Yep, that's uh, Heather's and I believe. Jill Case. When I was growing up, an Amish horse and buggy got loose. The horse ended up on my mom and dad's brand new car. And I am from Kenton. And the Amish picked up the left and left town and did not take any response. Oh, see, that's horrible. Oh, no. Man, I, I mean... That would, that you ever hear it. stuff like that? I, I did not. I know there was one guy that rear-ended a, a van here a couple years ago, I think. I don't know how it happened, but he he rear-ended a van. He poked his shafts or the back, back uh, of the window and stuff like that. You should but, take responsibility, mm-hmm. though. Yep. Yeah. Like, we would, we would get... Our horses would run away a lot and stuff like that, but... They do come loose. Yep, I they mean, do. that happens. Yes. We, had, we had one that, um, if he didn't tie a knot, tie the rope in a knot, um, she would take her mouth and, and she would open it. And next thing you know, she's coming home. Like, that, that, happened, that happened a couple of times, you know. And then last time I think it happened to her was uh, she ended up wrapped around in the clothesline. Uh, <laughs> I think that was one of the last times she did it. We used to have a, uh, Mark was his name, really old horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was wondering if you guys might have had horses where you were so old and trained, they knew mm-hmm. where home was. Yep. You could basically just take a nap, yep. and they'd take you right yep. home. We, we used to have one called uh, Bunny. She was an old draft, draft horse cross, uh, draft standard bread cross, and we took her to school. She was slow and everything, but you know you could basically – the one time we were going home from school, and Paul, he let one of the, line, the reins fall – and so he just had one rein. We we're trying to drive her with the one rein, and we we're like, "How are we going to stop?" So I got off the buggy and I tried outrunning her to stop her. Oh wow! And then finally, he grabbed the hold of her tail and and he stopped her like that. <laughs> <laughs> we had the Syrian. the horse's tail. Yep, yep. He just grabbed the tail and stopped her. So you know wow. that was that was pretty funny and everything. But no, we had some old horses like that too. But for the most part, I always went the one went for the ones that nobody else wanted to drive. Yeah, so. my yeah. Uh, my dad, I've shared in videos before, my dad was an alcoholic, so uh, he really loved that horse because if he got drunk and passed out, that horse would take him home. Wow. And he, he's literally just wow. passed out, and mm-hmm. all at once, the horse is standing in front of the barn by the door, and dad wakes up a couple hours wow. later, oh, I'm home. You you probably remember Raymond Ish from Kent. Raymond Ish, yeah. He had a horse, and he would go to town all the time, and he would fall asleep on the way home on 31 and he'd just be there taking a nap and and he'd wake up a couple hours later and, and he, the horse would be parked in the driveway wow yeah and he would get the church and i remember we, we us boys we would go you know 10 year olds and stuff like that we would go out and help him on hitch he would come up to the barn and none of us would dare to do it but he his horse was so safe that he just threw the reins off the buggy and and then he got slowly crawled off and Right. Yeah. Was he safe enough to stop at all the stop signs? You know. Yes, I, 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 I personally think he was. Wow. Um, and, and I mean, he must have been because he never got he never got hit or anything. And so yeah, it was it was pretty funny. I know the one we had that would go straight to the house. Sometimes ran the stop signs. And didn't do a very good job <laughs> at stoplights either. <laughs> but it does happen. Yeah. Hey, let's take one more question here. We're closing in on an hour. I put these uh, videos on YouTube, so it's got to be under an hour. So okay. we'll answer one more here. Um, let's see here. What we got? John Hustetler. There's another Amish name. Okay. I left the Amish for the third time this last time. I've been out for over a year now. Wow. Wow. Jill, we, we was from a family of nine kids, and we had to go without a vehicle until I was in high school and graduated in 1988, and that happened in around 78. Wow. So nine they, kids. That's like an Amish family. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Andy Shetler, I was raised Old Order Amish from MacArthur, Illinois, I think, from Arthur, Illinois, and yeah. can't imagine ever liking that, living like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they... 
Uh, I remember. No, remember I remember. Community. I remember that community. I think a couple of my friends from up in Michigan they moved to Arthur, um, and they're a lot more liberal. There's so. a lot of liberal communities that. Uh, I mean, obviously, if I'd have stayed Amish, I'd have been moving out, yep. and I'd have been going to a different community. Mm-hmm. And I often thought I would if I grew up and and uh, got married. I would have, but I ended up leaving before I got married. And then after I left, my tw- own twin brother and uh, my younger brother take off and some cousins and uncle went down to Tennessee to a more mm-hmm. liberal community. Mm-hmm. And I went, I still go down to visit them, but I was just like amazed. I, if, if that community, if I'd have known about that community, I would have probably at that time, mm-hmm. I'd have probably joined. Mm-hmm. And see what happens here when you start moving out to a more liberal community. What happens is you, you go to that community and then you look over to the next one that can do a little more and you move over there. So it's just from hopping one from one place to the next. So sometimes people are not always satisfied. Right, right. Boom, boom, let's go to yeah. the next one, next mm-hmm. community, next community. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't really like these rules. Let's just go to, hey, can I give you some advice if you feel like that? Just leave. <laughs> <laughs> right, then you don't have no rules. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, guess why I'm not Amish no more? I had a hard time following the rules. Yeah, I mean, it's not in the Bible. Most yeah. of that stuff that I was breaking, that was just only uh, going against the church's rules. Yeah. It wasn't breaking any sinful things that it says sin in the Bible. Yeah, so. yeah, and 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 you, if you, after I left, I would tell myself, you're either going to be Amish or you're not. So that's kind of why I left as well. And I was yeah. like, I might as well. If I'm going to be Amish, I'm, I'm not going to break any rules, but I, I like breaking the rules. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joyce Yoder, or uh, yeah, Joyce Yoder, so good to hear you again. I sure enjoy your Q and A's. A lot of people are. That's why I do them. A lot of people just love the uh, Amish uh, way of life. Uh, there's a lot of people that's contacting me. We'll, we'll wrap it up with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a reason I do that is because a lot of people reached out to me and, and they enjoy that, and they it actually educates them. It makes awareness and it educates people that have actually been in and around our community of Kenton that learn more about the Amish and how to maybe talk to them or deal with them mm-hmm. because of these Q&As and stuff to where they get a better understanding about the Amish. Yep. So, well, hey, uh, Elmer Miller, it was uh, you did really good. Uh, I'll probably have you on again sometime. That was fun. Thank yep. you for joining yeah, was, me on a Facebook Live. It was a good time. Thanks so, again. Yep. Y'all have a good day. Yeah.